What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. And today's topic is one that got me stuck for a little bit. It's section 3.22, describe and optimize EIGRP metrics. Notice it says describe and optimize, so we don't really have that much hands-on to do. This is the topic in the CCMP route exam, exam code 300-101 version 2.0. Let's take a look at the exam blueprint, see where we came from, where we're headed. Hashtag lab every day. All right, so exam blueprint, implementing Cisco IP routing, exam code 300-101. Uh, the last section we did for this series was equal and unequal cost of EIGRP load balancing. Uh, we launched GNS3 and experimented with load balancing with EIGRP. Today we're going to describe and optimize. Notice again, it says describe and optimize. So uh, I'll show you some commands on how to optimize it, but there's not much hands-on to do. We're just going to do mostly theory. There's a little bit of math in this as well. After that, we are going to configure and verify EIGRP for IPv6. That is more of a hands-on section. All right, so what, um, yeah, I know I like to compare uh, networking to roads and highways, right? I say this like throughout the series multiple times. So a metric, I like to think of metrics when we're talking about roads and highways, the mileage on a sign, right? So you know how you got these destinations, right? On the left-hand side, we got this, if you look at this, this uh, sign here, we got the destinations over here and we have the mileage on how far it takes to get there. Well, think of this mileage as the metric to get to our destination, right? And each type of routing protocol, EIGRP, OSPF, they all use different metrics, right? Today, we're gonna to discuss on how EIGRP does calculate this metrics. For example, this is an easy one. RIP, R-I-P, uses hop counts as a metric, right? It says, okay, but we always use the lower number, the better, the lower the, the metric, the better. And that goes with all routing protocols. So if we have an RIP destination that says it is four hops away, then we have another one that says it's two hops away to the same destination. Obviously, we're going to take the route that takes two hops because it's less, uh, it's, uh, it's less hops to get there. I'll show you guys how to do, how to calculate the metric for EIGRP. So again, the mileage or the, 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 the the cost it takes to get there would be our metric and um the destination is basically like say the network so this would be like an ip address right here and then the metric beside it so when we do show ip route that's what this would be the same thing as this is how we calculate it first of all eidrp uses a composite metric which can be based on the following metrics right we've got basically there's five metrics that we uh, used to calculate the um, the EIGRP metric. Really, four of them because MTU don't really count. As you can see it there, it says at the bottom. So notice I put two of them in green because EIGRP uses those two by default, bandwidth and delay. There's also loading and obviously reliability. And notice beside each one of these metrics has a corresponding K value. Bandwidth is K1, loading is K2, delay is K3, Reliability is K4. MTU, which doesn't really count, as you can see, it's off, often incorrectly stated that EIGRP can also use the smallest MTU, which it doesn't. In the path, in fact, MTU is included in EIGRP routing update, but is not actually using a metric calculation. So, again, by default, we use what's here in the green K1 values K1 and K3. That's why. I highlighted these in green. That's what we use bandwidth and delay to calculate the metric in EIGRP. Remember that. Again, these are the K values. We want to view them. You just do show IP route in each of them. It shows you what the K values are. As you can see right here, metric rate, we've got K1 is set as a one. K3 is set as a one. The rest are zeros. Why? Because those are the default values, K1 and K3, which is bandwidth and delay, right? Um, don't worry about the rest of this stuff this is uh, administrative distance. We've discussed that in other videos and uh, K value can be set between zero to 254. Any value by default, again, K1 and K3 are set to one. The rest is zero. We take these values and plug them in 
to the EIP, EIGRP formula, which I'm going to show you all in a couple, in a, in a couple slides. Before we even get into that, let's just, let's break down where these values are found. So you do show interface. Let's go ahead and pull up GNS3 real quick. I was experimenting with the metrics right here. So let's say we've got this topology. This is the uh, topology that we used for the last video, load balancing. Right, remember this guy right here. We're gonna look at the um, we're gonna look at this interface and see the metrics for it. Serial triple zero on router one. So interface serial double zero rather, and this is where you will find the values for EIGRP metrics. And they are located right here when you do the show IP, and then uh, the interface, and there they are right there. There's the MTU. There's bandwidth delay reliability and we notice load is split into two we've got transfer load tx load and rx load which is receive load right so let's go ahead and break those down okay so we've got bandwidth this is the lowest interface bandwidth along the path this is also known as least bandwidth this is represented in kilobits per second so if you got like five routers right you're going to pick the lowest bandwidth to to get to a destination right the lowest bandwidth and you'll enter that into the EIGRP formula. We'll get into that in a later slide. Load, this is a percentage with a value of between one to 255. A value of 255 means the link is 100% saturated. A load of 127, 127 obviously means it's half, halfway saturated. It's not dynamically measured. It's only measured at the time of a link change. No, actually it is, a, it's a dynamic value. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not dynamically measured. So. The delay, this is the sum of outgoing interfaces delays along the path to the destination. This is also known as cumulative, cumulative delay. This value is measured in tens of microseconds. Um, I'll show you all that in a little bit in a couple slides later. That is right over delay right here. You'll see it say DLY when we pull it up in, uh, in uh, when you pull it up in the CLI. Then we also have reliability and um, that's the reliability of the link. Obviously, percentage uh, is a, it's a value of between 1 to 255. As you can see, reliability means it, it says 255 out of 255, which means it's 100% reliable. This value is not dynamically measured. It's only measured at the time of a link change. And then right here, lastly, this is, uh, oh, we already, we already mentioned that. This is the load. Remember, load is split into transfer load and receive load, right? And again, MTU is not used in the formula. However, it is used to, if two paths have equal metrics but different MTU sizes. The path with the higher MTU will be selected. Okay, how do we change the EIB, EIGP metrics? You don't really want to do this, but if you want to, this is how you do it. You manipulate it by just doing bandwidth, and then you type in the value. I'll just show y'all real quick. Let's go ahead and pull up router one. And the same thing with delay, too. So... I'm gonna pull up router one and let's go back to, we are in this interface, right? Let's go ahead and go into interface serial double zero, my bad. And you just do bandwidth. And then you put in whatever number you want, bandwidth in kilobits per second. You just put it right there, put the, uh, put the number right there. Same thing with delay, delay. And then you put the throughput delay, tens of microseconds, simple as that. Again, this is not really recommended, but if you want to change the metrics, that's how you do so. Changing the K values, also not recommended. You can do that by typing metric weights, and then uh, you change the K values. You don't really want to do this either, because if you have mismatched K values, that can tear down your EIGRP relationship. Uh, if you have a, like, let's, let's bring it back to this uh, topology real quick. If you have a different K values, we've, we're working with this serial interface right here, right? If we have different K values on this side of the link, you're going to tear down that EIGRP relationship. So you don't want to mess with that. But if you want to, that is how you do it. You type in metric weights. I'll show you all real quick. Router. This is EIGRP 100. Then metric weights. And then you just type in zero for here and then the k1 k values let's say we did five for that one two for that one and so on and so forth k1 notices the k1 value due to k value k2 value k3 k4 and k5 all the way to the end but again you don't really want to do that that's not really recommended 
And this scary thing right here is the EIGLP formula. I know it looks it looks really complicated, but really it's simple. It, it get just to you know, give you the uh, spoiler alert right here in the black. This is what it boils down to. I'll show y'all real quick too. Remember we said K1 and K3 are set to one by default, right? So you look at this long, ugly looking formula right here. We got K1 value here. We got K2 here. K3 there, K4 and K5, right? Since K1 and K3 are set to one, right? Let's use, let's go back to our grade school math that we learned, you know, Cal's algebra and, and back in the, you know, elementary school, right? K1, we said is set to one, right? This is a multiple, this is basically like an algebra problem. Remember, remember PEMDAS, right? P-E-M-D-A-S, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally from back in, uh, back in high school. We work in what's in parentheses first, right? So K1 is set to one, right? So we're gonna say K1, this is a multiplication symbol right here, is also a dot, right? So K1 times bandwidth is what? K1 times one, right? So in this case, bandwidth times one is just bandwidth. So we working with that, this is just bandwidth. Plus, we said K2 is set to zero, right? So K2 times bandwidth, so zero times bandwidth, we know that cancels out is zero, right? And then divided by 256 minus the load. What is the load? We don't even care because zero divided by whatever at the bottom it equals zero. So this this whole thing cancels out is zero, right? So now we've got we've got bandwidth plus zero plus K3 is set to one, right? Times times delay. So we got one times delay. Delay times one is is delay, right? Anything times one is itself. So now we've got delay, this is zero, plus bandwidth, right? So bandwidth plus delay, and that's where this is coming in. So we've done the parentheses part, right? So now we've got bandwidth plus delay times this number right here. Well, what is that? We've got K5, we said K5 is set zero, right? And K4 is also zero. So we've got zero divided by zero plus reliability, that all cancels each other out. That's why we've got nothing here. So now we've got bandwidth plus delay times, this is zero. So this cancels out. So now we've just got bandwidth plus delay in the parentheses times this last number, 256. So now we've got bandwidth plus delay in the parentheses times 256. And that gives us our EIGRP metric. Um, Again, this you just have to know your your uh, order of operations is what they call it. Um, from back in the day, from high school, I had to go back to you know college algebra days. Um, but that's how you figure out the EIGLP formula. We'll take these numbers and plug them. We'll just take our numbers from the router and plug them into this formula to figure out our metric. Remember, the metric is kind of like the mileage to get to our destination, and the lower the mileage, the better. That's the path we're going to take. So how we figure out our bandwidth, the calculated bandwidth is the reference bandwidth times or divided by the slowest bandwidth. How do we know which is width? Well, you take the slowest one and divide it by the other number. And the value of the bandwidth may or may not be related to the actual physical. You're not actually changing the bandwidth. You're not slowing down or speeding up the, the bandwidth. That's that's decided by your ISP. You're just changing like, like the reference um, bandwidth. As you can see here, modify, we've already discussed this, how to change the bandwidth. Uh, again, it does not change the physical bandwidth of the link. Both ERGRP and OSPF uses bandwidth in default. I'm jumping all over these, sli these slides over here. Uh, uh, uses default, uh, uses bandwidth, right? Oh, OSPF uses bandwidth as well. It's a correct value for bandwidth. It's very important to the accuracy of routing information. This goes without saying. Okay, and then the delay part. So we've done, we've discussed bandwidth and the delay. This is how we calculate our delay. Without reading all of this, it's the sum of the delay of the outgoing interfaces divided by 10, right? So if you look at, let's say we've got a topology right here, this topology right here, the outgoing interfaces, right? So we've got, let's say we're trying to get to this from router one, we're trying to get to a location over here. Right. So you're just taking the delay of this plus the delay of the outgoing interface over here and divide that by 10. So outgoing, outgoing, take those delays 
and divide it by 10. And I'll give you all an example in, in, in the next couple slides. So again, the sum of outgoing interface delays divided by 10. And this is uh, given to you in microseconds. This little U symbol right here, that means microsecond. So it's not saying 100 micro, it's not saying 100 seconds. It's 100 microseconds, this little symbol right here. So here's the, uh, an example right here. We've got the slowest bandwidth along a path, 10 million, uh, it's basically, yeah, this number divided by the bandwidth. So remember, it's reference bandwidth divided by the slowest bandwidth times that by 256. And then plus the sum of the delays, sum of the delays divided by 10 times that number by 256. And that gives you the metric which is here at the bottom. I'll give you an example. This is kind of an example, but we're breaking it down here. This is the uh, the full metric right here. Here's the bandwidth part, right? So we're looking at this example right here. We've got the slowest bandwidth between these two, right? What's the slowest bandwidth between these two links right here? It's 1024 kilobits per second. And then this one, th one, um, is one million? 10,000 kilobits per second. I'm sorry, yeah, 1 million kilobits per second, right? This is obviously the slowest one, right? So we're taking the reference bandwidth divided by the slowest bandwidth. So that's, let's bring up a calculator here. 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, divided by 1024 kilobits per second. That equals, they round that number up, 97. 65, right? We take that number and times that by 256 times 256. That gives us, that's rounded as well. That's probably why I, I need to, either way, this number, this rounded it up. So this is the actual number right here, right? We take that, that's the bandwidth part, right? We take this bandwidth number, remember this number, 249, 940, 40, right? That's our bandwidth. Now, next thing we've got here is our I had to break this down right here. Our, our delays right here. So we take the sum of the delays divided by 10, right? So we've got 20,000 microseconds right here plus 100 microseconds. Let's bring that up. 20,000 plus 100 microseconds, right? We take that number divided by 10, right? That's what we said. We've got it, the math right there. Divided by 10, that gives us 2,010. Times, so take this number, remember parentheses first, times 256, times 256, that gives us 514, 560, that number right there. So we take this, the delay part, right? We take bandwidth plus delay, right? Let's go back to the formula. We did our, we did our bandwidth earlier, and now we just did our delay, bandwidth plus delay, right? This number times that by 256, that's gonna give us our metric. So we took this last number right here, that was our delay. So this was our bandwidth, this was our delay. Add those two numbers up and that gives us our final metric right here. And that's how you get the metric. Uh, I know it seems a little, a little confusing. It takes a little bit of math to kind of get this down. I, uh, I kind of struggle with it myself, but um, you know, practice makes perfect. Anyways, this is uh next video. We are going to do configuring EIGIP with IPv6. I may or may not do, do this video private. I mean, public. But anyways, that's my contact information. That is my YouTube. That is my Twitter. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.